Hi, and welcome to this edition of Hermit Crab Academy. Today we're going to talk about food. What should and should not be in your crabby pantry. The first thing we're going to do is look at commercial foods. And um, if you've been a member of our website or our Facebook community, Instagram following, you'll know that um, we often tell you to avoid feeding commercial foods because they're not safe. And the majority of the foods available are not safe. There, There's one or two products that are sold as hermit crab food that, that are considered safe, but um, we're going to show you how to figure out what's safe and what's not. So we're determining what's safe and what's not safe based on a couple different documents. And there's likely more research, but I just pulled these two just to show that this isn't something that we're making up. It's not a vendetta against these companies. Um, ethoxyquin has been shown to be toxic to aquatic organisms. Um, here's the, the link to the PDF, and this is from the EFSA journal. That's a fish journal. And ethoxyquin is used as a preservative and it's almost always hidden in fish meal. If it's hidden in the fish meal, the manufacturer of the food isn't required to list it. The other, the other research document we're going to quote is that copper sulfate is toxic to invertebrates, and that comes from Cornell University. So uh, definitely a safe source there. So there's the the source citation behind what we're talking about today. The first food that we're going to look at is this one by All Living Things. This is a PetSmart brand. Food medley. Pellets, shrimp, and mealworms. But it contains fish meal. So how do you know if that fish meal has a thoxiquin in it? You have to contact PetSmart. Ask them who their supplier is for this fish meal, and then go to that supplier and ask for their ingredients list. That's a lot of work, and I'm going to show you that it's so much easier that there's no reason to do that. Okay, Tetrafauna Hermit Crab Meal. These are all products that um, have been sent to me or given to me to use um, during the Pet Expo and for educational purposes, so I'm not feeding these or buying these fish meal. Same situation. You would have to go and look, right? But these guys did actually say, oh yeah, we put a thoxiquin in this. So this is a no. Crab Island fruit and flour contains copper sulfate. Zoomed hermit crab food. This one's a trifecta. Fish meal, copper sulfate, ethoxyquin. Now this one is the Flukers pellets. And it does say on here that it is ethoxyquin and copper sulfate free. So that's great, but... It contains fish meal. Oh, I had this circled, I thought. Oh, no, I didn't, but it's right here. It contains fish meal. So, again, you would have to contact Flukers, ask them who their supplier of fish meal is, go to that supplier, and verify that they didn't put ethoxyquin in the fish meal. Flukers is saying that they didn't add this to the pellets, but you don't know if it's in the fish meal, and it usually is. So... Why, while this seems safe, there's still a, a pretty big red flag right there. Ethoxyquin is also thought to inhibit the molt hormone. And uh, because we see a lot of molting issues from crabs that are fed pellets. And we do, an, um, for several years, we've done an emergency form on the website. Like almost as long as we've existed, we've had some ver version of an emergency form on the website. A few years ago, when we started on Facebook, I turned it into a Google form. So when anybody has an emergency, they send in the form with all of the vital information we need to try to troubleshoot their issue. When we see naked 
crabs, crabs we think are dead, crabs that went to the water to die, crabs that went down to molt and never came back. Almost every single one of them has been eating some sort of commercial food. Now, when you get ready to take your crabs off of this commercial food, which you should do as soon as possible, so that they uh, have a chance to be healthy and thriving with you instead of dead within a month or two, you may find that they act like they don't like good food. And I don't know why. I don't know if they've sort of become desensitized to new scents or smells from eating the pellet food. I don't know the science behind it, but we hear it a lot. But if you give them some time and keep offering lots of different foods, something will kick in and they will start eating and um, likely eating pretty voraciously, which is good because eating healthy is important. So you want to feed a safe diet and a nutritionally complete diet. It's important that your crabs have a well-rounded diet featuring all the necessary nutrients and minerals and good stuff so that they can be healthy, they can have a normal growth rate, they can have healthy, successful molts, they'll live longer with you, and you also don't have to worry about cannibalism. Now, if you did any kind of research on your hermit crabs when you first got them, you likely ran across at least one website that said, oh my God, you have to isolate your molters because the other crabs will eat them. That's true in some cases. It's not a, a given to say that, well, if the crab ate pellets, it's definitely going to eat its tank mates when they molt. It's not that cut and dried. If there is a protein deficiency in the hermit crab's diet, they're not getting enough protein for a long enough period of time, they may be driven to attack a molter because they are so desperate for protein. So if you feed your crabs correctly and a well-balanced diet, you'll never have to worry about your molters being eaten by another, another crab in the tank. Um, so let's pretty important that they eat right, just like it's important that humans eat right. So we'll look at, I've got a lot of safe foods here for you, and um, we'll start out with, I guess we'll start out with the stuff that I sell in the store, and then other items I have in my pantry, and some stuff that was given to me. So there's two items that I sell in the store that I consider must-haves because they are so nutrient rich and so beneficial and so well liked. The first one is worm castings, which is just basically worm poop. You buy it at uh, garden centers usually because it's a soil additive for growing flowers and vegetables and stuff like that. So um, must have, in my opinion. The crabs eat this, will eat this every single day, day in and day out. They never get tired of it. And it's because manure of worms and herbivores is full of partially digested food, which makes it easier for the crabs to digest it. So, yeah, good food, good food. The next one is green sand. This was introduced to us, I want to say about 10 years ago, by Michelle Stevens of Naturally Crabby. She found this at a lawn and garden store, researched it, and realized that it was something that would be incredibly healthy for the crabs because it comes from the bottom of the ocean. So she gifted me. She'd get, I think soon after that, you know, she got rid of her crabs and um, stopped selling and, and her blog went inactive, sadly. But she supplied me with a big bag of it, and I've always fed it. When I opened up our Facebook community a few years ago, um, I started promoting the use of green sand, and it's really widely caught on now. But you can take its origins back to Michelle Stevens and thank her for this amazing food. So my crabs eat this really consistently, and sometimes they will gorge and gorge and gorge on it. And then they kind of go off it for a little while. So I feel like whatever need it's meeting, like everybody in the tank's like, okay, I, I've got all I need of that. So I might take it out for a week and then reintroduce it. But we do just recommend trying to leave it in there all the time because you want to make sure the crabs have access to it all the time. The rest of these items um, are just a are just some general 
everyday, easy to find items that I offer for sale to make sure that you guys can get lots of different foods in small enough quantities. I have a lot of crabs, so it makes sense for me to buy bulk, big quantities. But if you only have two or three crabs, do you really want to go buy a 10 pound bag of worm castings? Like that, it'll last you a year. Like they won't go bad, but where are you going to store a pound of that and a a pound, well these come in eight pound bags, the smallest you can find these in is eight pounds, a bag of that. Like if you had to buy a pound bag of everything, where would you store it all? So that's why I started the store and selling these these small items. You clearly can go buy them for yourself, but if you don't want the giant quantities, then you can buy from me. We're just going to go through them quickly. Uh, dried persimmons, crab and lobster shells, just crushed up. Milled flax seed, which is basically just ground flax seed. Um, I also have the whole flax seed. I just am out of labels. If your crabs don't seem to care for the whole sh the whole seeds, then try this ground up stuff. You can also uh, sprout this in your tank, I believe. I know chia seed you can. I think the flax will sprout also. My crabs and isopods eat the seeds before they ever get a chance to sprout. Stinging nettles. Five grain mix. This has like wheat and um, bulgur, maybe some oats. I don't remember all the different grains that are in there. I'm not good with food. <laughs> That's why Amber is our food guru, and Michelle before her, and Carrie Campbell before her. Uh, mealworms, just dried mealworms. Hibiscus balloons. Raw shelled hemp seed. My crabs love hemp seed. Frika, also a grain. Um, I don't currently have this in stock. This is just the last of my personal supply, so it's not labeled. I have uh, two different mixes of raw nuts. This one is almond, pecans, pistachio, and they are raw. And then I also have one that is cashews and macadamia nuts and something else. I have a nut allergy, so I don't buy a lot of nuts for myself, so I buy these raw ones for the crabs. Dried rose hips. Ramona's Colossal Mix. This is lots of seeds and grains. I have another one. This also has some dried, I think this one has dried veggies in it and a little bit of dried orange skin. Um, there's also a Mega Mix that's a, a different set of products and they're listed on the website. What's all in there? I didn't write them all down and I don't know from memory. Red Clover. Quinoa. I have this in white. Usually, um, sometimes red and sometimes the tricolor. This is a good protein food and well liked. So quinoa is another one of those that I kind of consider a staple. Um, last but not least, oh no, wait, here we go. We've got silkworm pupa. The stuff is super smelly like a rotting corpse, but the crabs dig it does really well if you crush it up and and uh, give them just the crushed bits. They'll haul off the whole pupa if you put them in there. And then this one's not labeled, but this is mule deer poop collected out in Wyoming by my great niece and nephew. It's nice and dry, so it's hard and doesn't smell. Uh, hermit crabs like most herbivore poop because like with the worm castings, there's already partially digested plant matter and seeds and stuff in there. So even though it's kind of gross, they, they like poop. And as long as the animal you're collecting it from is healthy and hasn't been on any kind of medication in the last 30 days, it's safe to feed like um, guinea pig poop, chinchilla, deer, rabbit, basically plant eaters. That's what a herbivore is, plant eaters. So that's the majority of the stuff that I have on the website for sale. Now I'll look at... Um, some of the goodies that Amber has sent me. Amber's, like I said, our current Julia Crab 2.0, taking over for Carrie Campbell and then Michelle Stevens. So she doesn't have a store, but um, she makes a lot of different food mixes and she gifts them to myself and some of the other team members to try out so that we can suggest them. And she's very generous. She will post the recipes on our website so that you can go and make your own. But of course she asks that you don't uh, take her re recipes and redistribute, redistribute them, redistribute them. I don't think I'm saying that right as your own or 
repackage them, sell them as your own product or as your own recipe. Like, just don't be a jerk. She put a lot of effort into these recipes. She shares them freely. Don't go and steal her ideas and reproduce them as your own and then sell them. That's just, well, I'm not going to say that word. Anyway, let's look at some of the goodies she sent me over the past year. This is Curly Purple and Dino Kale. An Oakberry Mix. Salmon Skin and Shrimp Shell. The only thing I think she sent me so far that my crabs didn't eat um, were the nettles, which she said her crabs really like. I feel like my crabs are like my, me and they don't like vegetables. And they weren't um, terribly crazy about these bamboo leaves. But I'm pretty sure her crabs eat them. But again, mine are like anti-vegetable or something. Uh, we just got this Lemmy's Liver Lunch. That, that was surprisingly well eaten considering I served it along with this mango coconut. Which they ate basically every single bite of in both tanks. Even the littles, who are my pickiest eaters, ate all of this. Sweet Beet. Uh, this is something she sent me last year, I believe. And it's uh, I've served it several times because they like it. She sent me so much stuff, it's hard for me to, to have it all. I don't use it all up. Asparagus Kale Tomato. These black sesame seeds. She gave me a ton of these, and these were really well liked. Uh, Rainbow chard. I don't remember. I feel like that one was kind of lukewarm, but again, her crabs eat it. Then we've got raspberry leaf, just some dried raspberry leaves. And then she also sent me some awesome snake skin. Uh, crabs really like the snake skin. The rules for collecting and using shed snake skin is the same as with the poop. Make sure the animal you're collecting from is healthy and hasn't been on any medications for the past 30 days. Just to be, we just want to be safe and make sure you're not accidentally passing stuff on along to your crabs. There's such limited information on crab illnesses, um, so we don't always know what they can and cannot contract. So we try to always err on the side of caution. So I've got a roasted seaweed and kelp. Mary got those for me and so far my crabs haven't been super crazy about these but I know other people have said that theirs really like the roasted seaweed. Um, and you can see like these are these are good sized packages. So this is one of those products that I separate and repackage into smaller products so that you can have a small amount because this is like there's 10 sheets in here and a sheet might last you an entire year. All right, um, these are dried chamomile flowers, amaranth, that's a grain or a seed, kelp powder, good for the crabs, but I usually have to trick mine into eating it. It's like they know it's their veggies and they're like, meh. Dried mango. When you do the dried fruit, you need to find the, the fruit that's just dried fruit. No added sugar, no added salt, preservatives, anything like that. I don't currently have this in the store, but when I can find it, I do offer it in smaller chunks. You can also, of course, serve fresh mango. Coconut has to be unsweetened, untreated, just plain old dry coconut flakes. eggshells. These are um, the last of my farm fresh, family raised, healthy, free range chicken eggs. So um, you can use store bought eggs, but if you're using store bought eggs and they're not organic, you want to wash the outside of the egg before you eat it or anybody else eats it because those eggs roll through really disgusting stuff at the factory farms they come from. Once you open it, um, the crab can have the egg inside, either raw or cooked. And if you're going to eat the egg and you just want to give the shell to the crabs, that film and gook inside of it, you can leave that in there. And you can put the egg shell in there whole. I just crushed these up for um, 
space saving. It's easier to store them in these little bags than the whole shells. So another good source of calcium. Nut butters are good. I'm allergic to a lot of different nuts, so I can't have peanut butter. So um, I bought this little bit, little pouch of almond butter. You want it to be uh, just the butter, and if it has oil in it, a safe oil, like this one has palm oil in it, which we determined to be safe. You don't want any added sugar, salt, or anything else. You just want the nuts, and if it doesn't make its own oil, like this one must not, then uh, a safe oil. But that's a good good snack for them. And that's one of those things that's good to feed um, if your crab's a little lethargic or doesn't have much of an appetite or you're trying to get them off the commercial foods onto natural foods. Peanut butter seems to be a, a well-liked food. I also have some nutritional yeast flakes that I feed once in a while. These are the exoskeletons of cicadas. There's actually a couple live bugs in there. Uh, these are great because they provide a source of chitin to the crabs, which is necessary for a strong, healthy exoskeleton. So you can collect these just right off the trees in the like late summer, early fall, I think, is when they start to hatch out. You can serve them whole like they are, or you can crush them up. Crabs will eat them either way. spirulina this is like the kelp powder it's really good for them but they don't seem to like it unless you hide it in something um, you can mix this into honey and that will trick them into eating the spirulina and make the honey actually good for them so um, something you should have but it's expensive and it's very messy and it stains. I haven't started selling this yet in the store. Um, if there seems to be a demand for it, I, I can certainly do that. Coconut oil, that's a safe oil. Having healthy oils, omega-3s in the crab's diet is super important to the molting process. If their diet is missing the, the omega-3s and healthy oils, they will likely have problems shedding their exo during molt, could become stuck in the exo and die. So it is kind of important to have that in your diet. You can also get that from feeding krill and um, I think salmon and fish skin. I also have river shrimp in my pantry. These are a commercial food, obviously, and they're safe. All that's in here is the sun-dried freshwater shrimp. Bloodworms are okay. You can get these dried or the frozen ones. Um, I tried the frozen, the cubes, several, year, several years ago and didn't have a ton of luck with them. They seem to be more interested in just these little dried bloodworms. Those are safe. Regular old popcorn. No microwave popcorn. You just want plain popcorn kernels. Throw a few of them in the microwave underneath a bowl or in a paper bag, and you can pop just a few kernels at a time. You could also pop them in some safe oil, like the coconut oil, if you really wanted to. But for most of you, two or three kernels at a time would be enough to feed your crabs. Choya wood, used as a decor, chala or choya, depending on what you call it. But it's also edible. The crabs will pick at it and eat it. Tree bark. Find a safe tree that hasn't been treated with pesticides or chemicals and get you some bark. Leaves, wood, that's all safe. We have lists for that. The last thing in my pantry that um, we're going to talk about before I show you the rest of the foods from Amber that I just got is honey. And the bottle I'm going to show you isn't technically in my pantry because it's not the right kind of honey, but I don't have any of the right kind of honey at the moment. Honey, we recommend that you feed in moderation because it has very little nutritional value. And unless you buy, buy the raw, unfiltered local honey, it really doesn't have any nutritional value at all. It's basically like feeding your kids McDonald's every day. 
We do recommend it though if you have a sick crab or a lethargic crab who just doesn't seem to have an appetite. Sometimes the honey or the peanut butter will stimulate the appetite. So this is just like our kitchen honey. It's just um, honey from Aldi's. But it's not unsafe. It's just kind of like junk food. But it is. it, it can be an appetite stimulant if your crab needs it. If you're going to feed sticky foods like honey or oil or nut butter, you do want to remember to serve them in very small quantities or in a very small container so that none of your crabs can actually sit in the honey. We've had one report just this past year of a crab who apparently was sitting in too much honey and it trickled inside of his shell eventually it coated his entire body including the gills and suffocated him so you don't want that to happen so make sure it's just a small little container okay so my last thing is my untrieds from amber that I just haven't had a chance to feed yet but are some good options this is just a bag of cleaned and sanitized birch bark. Cece's savory surprise. I have them in here so that I know that I haven't fed them yet. Plum pie. My crabs love her food. And she puts so much time and effort into it. This is Ocean Pacific version 3. She doesn't have a store, like I said, but she, she knows her way around the kitchen and um, what's good and what isn't, what the crabs will like boar hearts. She's also a vegetarian, so the fact that she tries all this meat-based stuff is really amazing. Kangaroo. I'm looking forward to feeding that during one of our Crabiscope live video sessions. I'm saving it for that. We've also got some ground rabbit and bison. And the last one is the, oh, I'm not, anthocyanin nibbles. This is a color booster is what that big word means. So this won't turn your red crab into a blue crab unless they're genetically disposed to having blue. <laughs> so it can't give them a color they're not capable or ever um, going to display in the wild, but it enhances their colors and makes them more vibrant and rich. Like rugosus, that's one species that can come in pretty much any color you can think of. So you could feed these uh, to your rugosus if you had them and wait and see what all different color schemes you get. Okay, that's the last of the amber foods. I'm just going to put those back. The next thing I want to show you is our foraging guide, which is just a little brochure that I made up to kind of simplify gathering your own fresh foods. So as a reminder, anything you collect for the crabs must be free of pesticides, insecticides, chemicals. If you're not sure, don't feed it. And then of course, uh, respect all your state and local laws regarding foraging and collecting. This just starts out with uh, the list of safe flowers and plants that you can collect for feeding. Then it goes on to woods, leaves, and nuts. And then we've got fruits, vegetables, legumes, grains, and a note about greens, high in oxalic. My pronunciation is terrible. Acid should be cooked before serving. Some of these items that have the, the three asterisks should just be the flowers only, like these edible herbs. It's the flowers are the only edible part of these herbs. And then um, just another note about uh, the safe and non-toxic varieties of stuff. The back panel here is insects. And then this very back panel is different seafood. If you're feeding any kind of shellfish, it should be steamed or boiled so that you're not passing on any kind of shell disease or shell rot to your crabs, which uh, both of which are highly contagious. So you can find our store here.
crabstreetjournal.org forward slash store. We also have our store envy site where you can buy the species poster that shows the most common species kept as pets. It's a really pretty poster. And then we have our cafe press store if you are interested in hermit crab themes like t-shirts and hats and phone covers and bags that's our store there our main website the lycos which is a land hermit crab owner society website that's our parent organization and then our species website if you want to follow us or join us on one of our online communities this is our facebook our large facebook community our website for hermit crab adoptions our business page for the Crab Street Journal, our buy sell page for the main group, and then we're also on Google+. You can follow us on Twitter, on Instagram, Pinterest, Tumblr, Flickr, and of course YouTube, where you're watching us right now. So, um, yeah, I think that's it. Thanks for tuning in. Hope this answered some of your questions about what to feed, why to feed it, if you're not sure why to feed some of these things, and I didn't go into all of that because we have a really extensive feeding guide on our website. If you just go to the website and search for feeding guide, it will be the first thing that comes up. At the bottom of that article, there's a printable list of safe foods, and there's a printable list of what to feed and why. So it tells you all the different food groups that are key, why they're key, and what common foods fall in each one of those groups. So it's super helpful. And then there's also um, a printable on there called where to find food. So like, where would I go to find green sand? Or where do I find mealworms? Just to make it a little bit easier, especially if you're not in the States, it might give you an idea of where to begin your search locally. Because of course, I don't know where to find most of that stuff, you know, overseas anywhere. Um... Yeah, so any other questions about food, just leave us a comment down below and we'll do our best to come back and answer them. Thanks, bye.